And so basically what this video is gonna be about is what it's like to be a neuropsychology student, the day in the life of a neuropsychology student. What's up fam, welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil Sarpon. If it's your first time here, Welcome, this is Phil's Guide to Society. This channel is dedicated to all things psychology, wellness, as well as graduate school. And so I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update. I am going through my neuropsychology clinical site, practicum site, whatever you wanna call it. And I just wanna give you guys an update on how that's going, some of the things that I'm learning about and some of the things that I'm basically transitioning through at this practicum site. I do have to say, first of all, that it's going really, really well. I'm definitely enjoying the whole neuropsychology piece. I'm still not exactly sure if I wanna specialize in the neuropsychology, but I do think it's definitely very interesting. Uh, it's definitely something that's really cool that I think is very needed when it comes to psychology and treatment planning and mental health. And so basically what this video is gonna be about is what it's like to be a neuropsychology student, the day in the life of a neuropsychology student. So one of the first things that I have been learning about is of course all of the neuropsych testing and diagnostics that you can do when eventually students become a neuropsychologist. And I do have to say it is a lot of different types of tests whether it ranges from ADHD to testing for dementia to testing for all types of things. And so, of course, it's sort of a, a long process in learning all of these tests, but they're not as, as sort of hard as I thought it would be to try and pick it up and try and learn and things like that. What's really, really cool is that I talked about a sort of a, a medical model that goes through that happens as I go through this practicum site where I'm basically following around the neuropsychologist, I'm seeing what they do, I'm learning what they do, and as time goes on, as I practice with some of my cohort mates and some of the other students in the practicum sites, you start to do a little bit more and more and more until you feel really comfortable. And so it's all under supervision, it's all under sort of the, the watchful guidance of the neuropsychologists that are at this private practice. Now, you guys may or may not know, but in order for someone to do a battery of tests and what that is when anytime someone says a battery of tests it just basically means that when a neuropsychologist has done an intake session they've called a potential client the client has a, a problem that they want the psychologist to fix and so what the neuropsychologist is going to do is that the neuropsychologist is going to basically figure out what tests are going to be needed for this particular client and so they might pick four or five or six tests for someone to do when they come into the practice. And from what I've gathered from a lot of you, it seems like that's really the main thing that you guys are looking to get into is mainly just the assessment testing side of things, not really the therapy side, which is totally cool. But yeah, I mean, and, and, and that's sort of the day-to-day the -day basis of what testing could actually look like, where it could go from nine to 12, you take a little break, and then you go again from like one to five. And so, at the end of the day, you might only see like two clients, which is kind of crazy. It's kind of interesting to kind of think about how you might have way less clients, but it's also way more testing involved for particular conditions. Now, I'm actually gonna tell you guys something that's actually really cool. So for report writing, so report writing is after someone has gone through a bunch of the testing, they've done the intake initially in the beginning, they've gone through the testing, the neuropsychologist is going to write the report. You know, they have to put everything in writing in terms of what they did, how they thought about the situation, the process, analyzing the data, all of that stuff, right? They're gonna put it all into a report. What's cool is that there are gonna be neuropsychologists that will type up this report, send it out to whoever needs it. But then there's also other ways to uh, do the report, which one of them is dictating the report. So that's literally speaking into a microphone and the words, will translate into a report. Someone else will actually do the report writing in terms of putting all the, the sentences and the paragraphs together. And so this actually makes for a very quick and effective way of seeing a number of patients and clients on a consistent basis because they can do the testing, they can analyze the results, and then they can just dictate their report by speaking through the microphone. 
And what's cool is that you'll see that in, in some private practice settings with neuropsychologists, there's an, a whole team of people that are doing basically a lot of the work in order to actually get this done, right? So you might have the neuropsychologist that does the intake session and then you might have someone that do, someone else that does the testing and then you might have someone else that does sort of the scoring and the interpreting of the results and then you might basically go all the way back to the neuropsychologist and they might interpret the data and then they might actually give the feedback to the client so there's like all of these pieces moving where someone does the intake and someone does the diagnostic testing and someone does the scoring and interpreting and then and then the report gets written out and then and then you move on to the next client and so there's I think it's really cool just in terms of going through different systems and seeing how people will do some of the testing or some of the writing or some of the report writing and things like that. That is sort of a little bit of a, a picture of what it could look like once you get into graduate school. Maybe you want to do neuropsychology and you get into a neuropsychology practicum site. Maybe you want to do mainly the, the private practice side or maybe you do want to work in the hospital side or maybe you just want to work on the community side, whatever it is. It, it probably will be different in terms of the environment that you work in. And so I think it's good to kind of keep in mind what environment do you want to work in? And, and this is something not just for neuropsychology students, but also this is something for psychology students because that will mainly dictate the type of things that you will do on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, of course, you're gonna have neuropsychologists that will consistently do the same thing for all their clients, all their patients, but the day to day basis might actually look really, really different depending on the setting that you're in. And so whether you're in a rural environment or in a hospital or in a private practice, uh, definitely try and see if you can shadow a neuropsychologist or a psychologist in the setting that you might want to work in in the future. I think that would actually give people that are in college or people that are in graduate school a little bit of a better picture of how they want to take their career as they go into psychology or as they go into neuropsychology all right so just some things to kind of think about you know i wanted to tell you guys a little bit of what i'm i'm kind of doing in in this private practice that i'm working in as a neuropsychology student but i also wanted to tell you a little bit of the variance in terms of what neuropsychologists will do in this setting or or do in this setting and how that all kind of plays out in terms of the population that you're trying to serve and so if there's something that you're trying to go into it's, i think it's definitely going to be really important to shadow or actually work in that type of environment that you want to go into so that you can get a better picture of the population or the community or the patients or the referral questions that might come your way and so hopefully that all makes sense but that's definitely something that i've been learning about even for myself and i think if you can find the answer to that question it's going to be a lot easier to figure out what exactly you want to do in terms of the neuropsychology specialty all right so hopefully that makes sense if you guys have any questions definitely put them down in the comment section below if you have not already smash the like button subscribe to the channel hit the bell for notifications anytime i put a video and with that i will see you guys in the next video